this is a good segue to Flare, right? Because we understand the connection with XRP and Flare, or some of us do, some of us don't. Bottom line is this: Force predicts eight trillion to XRP and Bitcoin markets amid a looming U.S. dollar collapse. Like, don't like the. I mean, I don't like the idea of bad things happening to people. Of course not. But at the same time, there's always a certain amount of supply and demand for anything. What kind of demand will this create for crypto? That's the bottom line, right? Even if you are just new to this, you can have a broader sense of why we pay attention to some of this stuff. So. Crypto basic, all right? Let's pull this up for a second because, you know, again, worth paying attention to. So um, getting more into this, we're going to pull up this article. And basically speaking, yeah, here it is. Forbes predicts $8 trillion to XRP and Bitcoin, just like we mentioned. When was it reported? Literally today. Goes into detail in a recent article, Forbes magazine highlighted, as we know, an extraordinary shift approaching the crypto market with XRP positioned at its core. Now, here's some of the nitty gritty. The report was entitled U.S. Dollar Collapse Shock 8 Trillion Predicted Fed Inflation Flip to Spark a Critical, critical excuse me, Bitcoin as in BTC, Ethereum, and even XRP and crypto price boom to rival gold. This is crazy stuff, right? This is why a lot of times you'll still see people like, well, all the time, mention that, you know, Bitcoin is a great store of value because, again, the gold reference, gold has been a great store of value for the longest time. I guess you can even say, you know, silver is to a sense too. I mean, um, Robert Kiyosaki on a re uh, recent video was talking about some of this and then if anything, maybe I'll have time to share that. But the key thing is he mentions that, you know, he remembers when he was buying, um, you know, silver at like 50 bucks. And now he could buy it for like 35. And, and that's a lot better than just being told. And, and you know, God rest my my grandmother. I love and miss her every day. But she would always tell me, hey, you know, grandson, you need to basically uh, save your money. Right. Stop buying toys and stuff like that. You know, save your money. But in reality, instead of saving a dollar, right, like actual cash money, it should have been like save your money for you can buy real, you know, real world assets as in precious metals. Right. Because that's going to be worth a heck of a lot more than this paper back nonsense. That's not backed by anything. Right. But, you know. Whose grandparent or mother or whoever didn't tell us that stuff? Anyway, back to this, right? Talks about the Forbes report, argued the potential of a shock, eight trillion. This is huge, guys. I don't think, you know, maybe some of you guys realize how huge it is. It's massive. Eight trillion vacating the U.S. financial system for the XRP and Bitcoin markets amid a projected U.S. dollar collapse. Chad Steingraber, a professional game designer in the XRP community, spotlighted the report for the XRP army. We have shared so, some of the things. I know Quant Papa doesn't like when I share some of his stuff, but hey, sorry, Quant Papa. Anyway, respect you, but that's all right. Um, he states, U.S. dollar collapse, shock, $8 trillion, predicted Fed inflation, flipped to spark a critical Bitcoin, Ethereum, and crypto price boom to rival gold. That was reported yesterday. But in the detailed report, Forbes first noted that XRP and other major cryptos have recently experienced a loss of momentum. However, stated there is a glimmer of hope on the horizon with significant speculation from financial experts. Shout out to Will Fix. He's always talking about that glimmer of hope, right? And if anything, is that so bad to have hope? I think he's spot on. We all want some hope. What about this projected USD collapse, right? So it goes into detail. It says that Forbes placed un, was placed under scrutiny um, in regards to the fate of the US dollar and, of course, how the United States grapples with a daunting $33 trillion debt. I thought it was more. I could have sworn it was 36. I thought it was actually as high as 38. I don't know. Maybe that's not accurate. But where the case be, even if it was over 30 or 20 or 10, it's too much, right? 
it disclosed that analysts from the prominent equity research and uh, strategy firm Jefferies predict a potential collapse of the U.S. dollar as the Federal Reserve becomes compelled to restart its money printing efforts. Now, I want to state this real quick. Let's pause there for a second. When we get into the quant coverage of the night, this is all going to come full circle, right? So if anything, it's going to be a nice little intro to why we're talking about some of these doom and gloom scenarios. If quant's your thing, you want to stick around to that, even though we're going to get into flair here in a bit. Um, but yeah, even getting into this, you know, Jeffrey, uh, excuse me, according to Jeffrey's experts, which Forbes, of course, cited, the Fed policies could trigger a significant price surge. Yeah, you read that right. Not a typo. In XRP, BTC, and even Ethereum. The reason behind the projected price jump is the potential of cryptocurrencies like XRP rivaling the status of gold as a safe haven asset while the cash printing endeavors drag down USD. I mean, you're now starting to see mainstream news finally talk about some of this. You know, it's one thing to get somebody like Jim Cramer who's like, hey, here's what to buy, and that ends up being not what to buy. And he says, here's what not to buy, and then you find out that actually ends up what to buy. But now when you get this narrative shift of you, if you can't beat them, join them, I think this is the proof in the pudding. Yes, this is crypto basic, but let's face it, guys, this is more of a mainstream outlet. So glad to bring this all to you guys. So there's obviously a lot more goes into some of these other examples about it and so on. But I am on a kind of a time constraint tonight. Um, so it won't be like three or four hours or anything like that. So we'll get into it. I now want to introduce this whole thing of flair to you guys. And for some of you guys, it's like, hey, man, I already know about flair. Cool story, bro, right? Well, it's more than a cool story. Let's get into the nitty gritty of why you want to pay attention to this. Here's why. So for one, we're going to start off with um, this right here. Here's flair currently ranked 107th, all right? It's not quite in the top 100, but it has been before. Earlier today, when I was talking to Crypto Mike, roughly about an hour, hour and a half ago, this was up over 170% volume. It's now at 70%. Why do you think that is? Because people do recognize all-time lows. Let's highlight what I'm talking about. All-time lows for Flare happened six hours ago. That isn't a typo either. All-time highs were nine months ago, and it was as high as... Um, Close to eight cents, slightly under eight cents. Now, of course, that's an 87% drop off since this all time highs. But the bottom line is this if you know real research and you appreciate real research, and maybe you've already done your own research, hey, awesome, hats off to you. We're always trying to pay attention to the low of the lows. Now, this could go even lower. Don't get me wrong on that, right? I'm not a fortune teller, but I do pay attention to opportunity right we all do that's why we're all here right so it is worth noting that this is now below one penny and basically speaking um for myself you know i decided to make a pretty significant position into this um but that's not the key thing the key thing is this okay the use case of flare now if you're wondering some of the other stats that I can provide you without getting more into the, the white paper. And by the way, you can always read the white paper if you choose to nerd out. Most people don't. Read a light paper at bare minimum, right? A few key things to point out. It does have a mer uh, verified market cap of $240 million, all right? Recent volume is up about 69% of the 24-hour chart. Again, it was a lot higher about an hour ago. Um, the circulating supply is close to $25 billion. Total supply is 100 billion 559 million max supply. There is no reported max supply. And of course, this is where people say, well, I don't want to touch this then. You also got to keep in mind, this is at the bottom, right? So how much is in circulating supply? Great question. Basically speaking, we are at roughly 25% <clears throat> give or take on the circulating supply. We understand that the examples before we've given you, states that we prefer things to be at 80 percent or higher because we feel like we don't have to chase things uphill right chase things uphill but what makes this different compared to the other example what makes this different is that you are at bottom 
So that risk that you take on in regards to chasing the asset uphill is significantly much more different compared to other examples of other ones that we use, like the graph and all those other examples in regards to tokenomics. If you saw that Jasmine QNT, among other tokenomics example video. Okay. So I want to throw that out there. Now, getting into where you can get this before we get into the use case real quick, many different markets where you can get this. Um, basically, I got mine on crypto.com, but my key thing is you can also get it on uh, MEXC. Uh, you could use, actually, Mike Cornwell did 20x at leverage on MEXC. Again, guys, the point is make sure that you're prepared to, you know, potentially lose, right? Don't put in more than you can afford to lose on anything right uh, you can also get this on coinbase um those of you guys who are overseas who still have access to kucoin you can get on kucoin um some other ones there's a lot right bit true femax there's just a whole bunch of ones basically ishmart if you want to go with them all right so a lot of different ones probit <clears throat> we know that probit is i think for x swap and was an um plugin and so on right all right, so getting into the use case about this, let's talk about this for a second. Basically speaking, what is Flare, right? Flare is EVM base layer one, because remember yesterday we we're talking about XRP and EVM sidechain. So if anything, this is kind of a nice little follow up. But yeah, they are a layer one aiming to make blockchain more useful by giving developers decentralized access to, of course, high integrity data from the chains and the internet. Now, the cool thing about this is, like it says, this enables new cases and monetization models while allowing dApps to serve multi-chains through a single deployment. So, again, if you saw yesterday's show of what David Schwartz was talking about in regards to the bigger picture, I think you can realize just on the surface how big Flare can be. Now, of course, that was just a little brief gist. We're going to get more into this. Um, we'll talk about this for just a brief moment. What makes Flare unique? interoperability right um and also this thing about state connector and you know uh basically being able to secure um uh, securely excuse me uh acquiring the event of information from other blockchains and the internet to be used as smart contracts on flare so just to give me the quick gist flare enables basically almost all blockchains if i'm not mistaken um to uh be able to have smart contract functionality that's huge as we know a lot of blockchains don't have smart contracts it seems like they do but they don't I mean, we understand that smart contracts is the key pathway forward for an ecosystem whether it's thriving or not at least that's like you know your entry point that's why i put so much emphasis on stellar right with Sorama. but you know we are talking about flare we are talking about xrp and you know it's been criticized right uh, by a few of you guys, you know, um, nothing against Mr. Cool Cat, right? I respect Cool Cat if you're here tonight. This is not me picking on you. You may feel as though this is me picking on you two, two days in a row. It's not. But the point is this, okay? It has been criticized when it comes to Ripple's XRP that, you know, they don't really have anything solid in regards to smart contracts. Now, we did see in the past recently, you know, there is actually some other things in regards to smart contracts, but Flare really, really stands out to basically be that answer to that solution for smart contracts. So right on the surface, right there, is your answer to the whole question of um, what is the utility of Flare? There's a lot more, obviously, in regards to utility. What about what the token is for, right? Because we could talk about utility all day long, but what about the actual native token of Flare? If it has no utility, then what's the point of buying? Well. FLR is the native token, and it's used for payments, transaction fees to prevent spam attacks, staking validator nodes, et cetera, et cetera. Now, they do have this thing about wrapping their particular tokens and how you can earn more flair. And at the end of the intro deep dive about flair, we'll get specifically into why that's important. I'll show you a nice three-minute video that sums it up 100% from beginning to end on how to do that if flair is your thing. All right, getting into a little bit more about Flare, okay? Here's straight from the Flare community. And basically speaking, there's a lot of possibilities in regards to Flare and um, how it opens up a lot of 
cool things for developers. And at the end of the day, isn't that what it's all about? You, you know, you yourself as a retail holder might not like the idea of me even talking about how attractive this is to devs because you're just not maybe a nerd and that's okay. But once you understand that when devs can build on a platform and the ease of use is awesome and they like it and then it's just that simply easy to use and for them and their other dev buddies to build on, well, then that's the pathway for, for a uh, thriving ecosystem, right? So like it says, prepare for a wave of interest as the world gets out that Flare is solving some of the biggest problems in crypto. And this also catches my attention because when I hear things like this, just on the surface, I said to myself, my God, this is under a penny and we're at all time lows as of six hours ago. I'm all about opportunity. I'm, I'm all about trying to find gems. But what about ones that are like literally borderline or have been into the top 100 and this could very well be on the cusp of being labeled as a blue chip in the future. Like, aren't we all about that? Yeah. So getting more into this, I want to blow this up. And on this particular one, it talks about, don't just look at this flow chart, understand it. How about this? Let's take a moment to understand the presented material. So number one, they have all sorts of things listed here. I'll just get to the, some of the key highlights, not all of them. Um, they have, for instance, NFT dApps that are going to be built on Flare. Remember the connection last night talking about uh, what is it, XLS 30 or 38, right? In regards to uh, what David Schwartz was talking about. Um, you can also select a preferred payment chain token in the actual decentralized app. The Flare Time Series Oracle, which is called FTSO, provides the dollar exchange rate for the chosen token, right? At the time of um, the market, right? On the fly, right? No, we, it's basically act, activating the FX market to a sense. Um, getting more into it, how about this? Far right, DAP provides amount to pay, payment addresses, payment reference. Users can, of course, make payment using their wallet for the chosen token. User obtains the transaction data. I mean, there's a lot that's to be mentioned here, especially when it comes to state connector, which we'll get more into in a bit. Getting more into a little bit about Flare, especially for, um, you know, noobs and so on. This comes from Being Crypto. Shout out to Mike Cornwall who provided this information. And getting into this, you're going to see the Flare Network for Beginners, a guide to the token. Because let's face it, some of you guys are are new. Some of you aren't. Maybe you also need a refresher. Maybe, you know, there's something here that Tim Shea might not even know about, right? Shout out to you, Tim. And basically, it is a guide. It was printed January 23rd of this year. So it's fairly new. But there is a lot of buzz. And we'll get into about, you know, how you get consistent Flare airdrops, like legitimate airdrops, right? By the way, guys, never click on those XRP airdrops or quants or Jasmine airdrops, it's, it's it's those you know those are scams. Okay, don't do that. Um, but yes, now that the Flare token has been distributed, the network is officially open for business. So what does it mean for you? You know what's Flare all about? Well, again, we're gonna get into some of these key things. And basically speaking, it's an interoperable layer one proof of stake blockchain. Kind of mentioned about earlier, right? We always talk about these EVM virtual machines and basically Flare was created in 2020. And what was the aim to bring smart contract and interoperability capabilities to blockchains, but specifically, let's face it, XRP, right? So when people state and nothing against anybody that, you know, um, Flare or I'm sorry, XRP has a problem. And that problem is the lack of smart contract functionality. Well, if you have something that's going to complement something like XRP or be the solution, I think if anything, that creates not just demand for um, Flare, but also helps XRP out, right? And if you own both or diversified, isn't that a good thing? So looking more into this, Flare proposed a scaling, uh, scaling proof of stake blockchains without comprising their security. I want you to hear this for a second. Um, of course, Ripple powered with... Um, uh, powered by XRP was one of the main targets and inspirations of just that, the Flare Network. That's why we reference it. Um, so how does this get all done without comprising security, right? It does this by ensuring that the network security is not linked solely to its native tokens, as in with the case with most, if not all, proof of stake networks. So I have another short little thing from this guy, um, and we'll get into that in a bit because this one is a little bit long. 
Um, but I want to share with you who this guy is. It's Hugo Fillion. He's the CEO of the project. He has a background in portfolio management, commodity derivatives. Again, think about that, commodity derivatives. Um, let's see here. Uh, he also has a master of science. I do as well, but who cares? Anyway, in machine learning from UCL, where he met the other co-founders. Okay. So I don't want to get so much into him. I want to get back to why I want to show you this brief clip. But basically speaking, um, let me just pull this up for a second. I think I got it right here. He's going to go into detail. Yeah, here it is. Um, in regards to this whole thing with data, because you guys know me, you know, I'm always talking about Jasmine. We talk about a little bit of IOTA. I, we always talk about data, right? That's the bottom line. So I want to share this. Uh, this is straight from the Flare Network. So it's official. And it's their thesis, Flare's thesis in data first, right? I like this because we know I do talk about Jasmine all the time, right? You know, Jasmine is all about data first and, you know, data democratization, even finance now. This is a different particular project. So number one, give developers all the data they need to create new blockchain use cases. That sounds cool, does it not? Provide the data at minimal cost for maximum what? Scalability. So here's the thing. Later on into this intro deep dive, we're going to get into how Flare not only scales and give you some examples, we even give you the exact TPS and how it allows what yes two days in a row boil it mash it stick it in stew it allows xrp to scale yeah gotta pound that home all right as blockchain adoption of course increases this was an interview from defiant news uh, can you tell me a little bit about um let me see real quick they are unbiased independent DeFi coverage over 105,000 followers this is a quick interview from the highlights of that interview because I didn't want to play like a 45 minute long interview for you guys. But nonetheless, this is the CEO of Flare, like I just introduced. Please smash that like. Let's listen to what he has to share in regards to Flare Network. Here we go. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your approach with Flare Network to crypto use cases? So obviously we're, I guess, trying to run a broad gamut of what can be use cases. Uh, this is why our, our kind of data first thesis is sort of where where we've pitched ourselves because we think that you know uh, blockchain as a, as a ledger is great um, blockchain with you know computation and a ledger is fantastic uh, but you need to be able to access data from external to to the chain in a essentially as low cost way as possible if it's expensive like you know the existing uh, incumbent oracles uh, you, you you know that's not going to allow scaling um, and really we think that the future is about allowing people to build dapps that have access to as much data as possible so that they're useful uh, so we think that obviously we're starting in defi uh, we think there's a lot of you know possibilities in gaming a lot of possibilities in tokenization uh, and a lot of possibilities in machine learning and specifically around data. Few key things I want you to take away from what he just said. So for one tokenization, we've been talking about tokenization a lot lately, you know, yesterday, day before, many weeks, right? Um, he talks about this whole thing of data, but hear me out on this. Maybe you can agree or disagree with it. It's totally fine, right? I'm not gonna take no offense to it. I mean, who cares, right? Should we treat, maybe unofficially, Flare kind of like how we treat Sorbonne for Stellar? Not all the way. Hear me out on this. Why would I say something like that? Because the key towards smart contracts, okay? You think about Sorbonne, that is literally their premier key to smart contracts, right? Well, again, Ripple's XRP is criticized for not having that functionality, but then enter Flare for having that so is that am i too far off when it comes to that again try your own conclusion now some people will say yeah you are too far off with that max because you know sorbon you're going to have at least 70 projects um as i would say flip of the switch when that goes live on their mainnet and it's going to be massive and i would agree with you i also want to talk about something in regards to flare because with flare there's apparently about a hundred current projects part of their ecosystem now that's not a lot compared to other blockchains 
but it's, it's definitely worth pointing out. And I'll give, you, I'll give you guys some examples on that here in a bit as well. Don't want to get too ahead of myself, right? All right. So getting more into what we have, I'm going to pull up the next part of all of this. And, you know, we always pay attention to all the little nitty gritty. Um, here's their website. I do want to at least show you what the website looks like. Um, I'm not going to put a lot of time into it. But I like how it says connect everything. It's just blunt right in your face. Flare is the blockchain for data providing developers with security centralized access to high integrity data from other chains and, of course, the Internet. Getting more into it, they, of course, reference the whole thing at EVM base layer one. We really talked about that. Um, State Connector will give you a little bit more examples in regards to that. Uh, but it states, unleash the full potential of blockchain, layers decentralized data acquisition protocols, and scalable EVM-based smart contracts. Again, back to what we talked about just briefly uh, about a minute or two ago. Uh, to expand the reach and value of your project, build on Flare with more data than ever before, or build with Flare to serve multiple ecosystems. What about ones that don't have ecosystems? So even putting aside XRP, right, because we really talked a lot about that, this creates supply and demand because you want to know something for a lot of blockchains, they just got started or, you know, um, you know, they just need that extra oomph, extra leg up, right? I think Flare can get that job for, done for them and so on. And especially if, you know, let's say, for instance, they, you know, Flare is already going with XRP. What about when XRP flies? And, you know, uh, we have some examples of, yeah, Flare all of a sudden, man, uh, check out XRP. They have all these new smart contracts. Word will get around, especially if XRP starts doing some big things. Yeah. Again. We talk about undervalued assets. It's just as simple as that. Think about it for a second. Now, getting more into this, here's, uh, I guess you could say some of that community-driven news because I didn't want to just give you guys, um, you know, hey, here's here's the typical thing, you know, an intro, so on and so forth. I want to give you guys a, a little bit more because one thing to share the mainstream, let's share some of the community-driven news. So this comes from a guy, his name is Digital Dirt, and Kind of a funny name, but anyway, um, he says Flare Network is building something amazing. You report this, of course, on October 8th. So this is literally pretty new. And he says few don't even know about it, right? Maybe some of you guys in the comments or watching this on the Chopped Up or whatever the case may be, just don't know about Flare and, and that it exists, basically, right? So he says the upside is incredible. And those of us that have been holding Flare and participating in the network through delegation, will be quite happy we did in the coming years. Well, can you give me an example why, Max? Of course. For one, first, Flare brings data on chain in a decentralized manner, right? We talked about that. But not only for Web3, but Web2, right? We're not quite to Web3 yet. Then it uses the data to create an FA asset or F asset system, excuse me, connecting chains that don't normally have, of course, like you just said, smart contract functionality. So we recover that. Then it connects smart contract platforms, of course, to Flare and to each other, right? Vice versa, through what is called Layer Cake. You know, now that sounds crazy, right? Like when I think Layer Cake, I'm thinking, you know, like, oh, I'm a noob. You know, uh, does that have something to do with Pancake Swap? No, not that. But, you know, this allows this in a fast, insured, and useful manner. So, for instance, like it says, remember Layer Cakes, and most of you guys don't know this, so it's okay. It collects or carries, I should say, a call data, which lets people execute transactions across chain without leaving their home chain. So that in itself, if you're wondering, like I always state, what's utility in motion? Well, it's transactions happening, right? So boom, there's your, your, your uh, excuse me, utility in motion. Layer Cake also allows FA, uh, I would say FA, F assets to be sent to all other smart contract networks connected through Layer Cake. So that right there gives you another example of utility. Now, at this particular point, smart contracts can be built on Flare that access the value of many chains and can utilize data for more sources than ever before. See what you want. You ever notice Rich, Common Sense Crypto? He talks about uh, Flare quite often. And why, why does he do that? Because he understands that it's a very, very undervalued asset with huge upside potential. You know, it's one thing that this could be labeled as a project that only connects, for instance, to XRP, and that would be big in itself. I would probably still be sold on it. 
But when you see this whole thing of, you know, like it says right here, sent to where all the smart contract networks, that's big. That is really, really big. Okay. Um, what about this whole thing of how it propagates the data proven on Flare from the functionality at point one to as many networks as possible as a paid for service to other networks? That's like, wow, I didn't realize that. That sounds cool, right? This benefits, of course, Flare validators. So if you are a validator, then there's your benefit. I mean, you see how it all comes together, right? Um, and also the participants. This also allows data to be propagated across chains, even if it didn't originate, of course, on Flare. Now, getting more into this before we get into the next bit of the outline. Um, this is all basically done without centralization or compromise on core blockchain principles. You know, I love QNT, and we know that when it comes to QNT, it's all about interoperability. And so, of course, at some point, somebody's going to bring this up. What is Flare Connect Everything? How is it different for, from example, uh, Quant? And this is, again, why I want to bring it to you guys. Um, so I want to pull this up for a second. And basically, you know, everybody's seen one of those little magazines or not magazines, one of those little books, you know, uh, blockchain for dummies or how to, you know, how to work a computer for dummies, anything for dummies, right? So here's the bottom line, and we'll get into the next part here in a bit because I, I can't put the whole focus on this all day. This is good stuff, though. So from the educated or educational point of view, okay, and this is a legitimate question. Imagine Flare as a special platform that helps different types of digital money called, obviously, cryptocurrencies, right? Work together, but better, okay? That should grab your attention. It does this by adding a special feature called smart contracts to cryptocurrencies that don't have it, right? Smart contracts are like super smart agreements that can automatically do things when certain conditions are met. It's like having a robot, you know, that follows the rules of an agreement and takes action on its own when everything is set up correctly. Now, there's a little bit more in regards to this. So it sounds like it's lots of it's verbatim, but this is a great example I don't want to skip for you guys. So here's an example. If you lend someone money and they pay it back on time, the smart contract can basically uh, automate by giving them a reward or reward. Uh, Flare, on the other hand, wants to make this cool feature available for other crypto like XRP, even Litecoin, Ethereum, so on and so forth, right? Flare makes these cryptocurrencies more useful, opens up a lot of exciting possibilities. Again, I mean, it's one thing to do it for like maybe one or two chains, but what about all chains? That's huge. Maybe that's why they call it Flare. Like they, you know, uh, like that one movie from back in the day, The Office, you know, Jennifer Aniston, you know, she didn't, you don't have enough Flare. You're not wearing enough Flare. Well, Flare brings Flare to the blockchains. I mean, no pun intended, but literally you can see maybe how that's how they got the name. I don't know, but where the case be, I get it. So you get it. In addition, in regards to some of this, I'm going to skip this part real quick. I mean, because, I mean, I think we talked about some of this. Uh, Flare has its own special token. It's also called uh, Spark. Think of it as a special fuel that powers the Flare network and helps make decisions about how things should work. So bottom line is this. Flare is like a super uh, power for cryptocurrencies. Uh, it makes them even more powerful and allows them to do really cool things automatically. So, again, the key thing you should take away from this is, is it all automated? Yeah, it is. Flare network in regards to quant, right? Because that was a question that got brought up. Because I knew at some point somebody would say, well, what makes this different from quant? So Flare con uh, network connects different blockchain networks, just like quant, for instance. Both quant and Flare want to create interoperability between different blockchains, allowing them to communicate and share information with each other. However, of course, there is differences, right? Because if, if there was no difference, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I would probably go all in on Flare compared to Quant, right? Like, are, are you kidding me? Right. And again, I knew somebody was going to ask this, so I'm glad to be able to bring this to you guys. While both Quant and Flare have the goal of connecting blockchains, they approach it from slightly different angles. Quant focuses on overall blockchain interoperability, while Flare focuses on smart contract integration, right? But even with Quant, you, have, you do have a lot of things in regards to smart contracts as well. Um, but that is worth noting. And this was a great little write-up um, that I really appreciate. So if anything, I'm going to go ahead, like this. I'm going to reshare it. 
And basically speaking, we're going to get to the next part of what we have because, I mean, it, it is good stuff. I mean, some people, I think, obviously appreciate the content. Maybe some don't. I don't know. Maybe just want me to jump to the next thing. Um, but bottom line is I do have a lot more I want to get into. So um, we did talk about the whole thing in regards to Flair and smart contracts and all that stuff. Um, one of the things I want to talk about that we didn't have a ch chance to talk about is three key things, okay? Or actually four. Um, so for one, what about payments in regards to Flare, right? So Flare, as in the FLR token, could be, of course, used for payments. This is, again, my own notes. On the Flare network and bridge assets between blockchains. So boom, that answers that particular question. What about staking, right? Well, some of you guys do want to do staking because this is a proof of stake. Great question. Um, FLR tokens can be staked at, you know, to secure Flare networks and, of course, earn rewards. And at the end of this outline, we're going to get into how you can do that in under three minutes in that particular video. So that's cool stuff. Excuse me. Sorry about that. How about governance? Just real quick, right? FLR holders can participate in the governance of the Flare network by voting, of course, on proposals. Like, you know, a lot of you guys a whole Luna Classic and stuff. You already understand how that works. How about Oracle fees? Users can pay FLR fees to access data from the Flare Time Series Oracle, which is called FTSO. Um, and that basically provides decentralized price data uh, to smart contracts on Flare. Again, more of that utility in motion. Last part. Uh, I should say second to last part. Collateral. Yeah, there's got to be a little bit of collateral, right? So Flare can be used as collateral in third-party decentralized applications, like, for instance, dApps, and uh, basically build on Flare. I mean, that's super cool, right? Trying to build out the ecosystem. Now, here are some specific examples on how Flare, as we speak, is being used today. For one, there's a thing called Wrapped XRP, which sounds crazy, right? But Flare is being used to wrap XRP into WXRPT. That uh, sounds bizarre, right? But this can be used in DeFi applications on Flare. So when we talk about those that those apps, you wrap up the XRP, then you use it on Flare. That's a little bit more of that utility in motion. Um, there's, of course, Flare Finance. You could use it for lending, borrowing, staking services. There's even a DAO. Now, getting into a little bit more of what I have um, in regards to my notes, we do know, of course, that any blockchain can use Flare, so we recover that. I need to cover that again. Getting more into this, let's uh, pull this up. I want to talk about State Connector for a second because I do feel as though it's a big deal. So basically speaking, here it is in regards to State Connector. We talked about it earlier. They are a smart contract that runs on the Flare network. Now, some of you guys are retail investors. You're like, I don't want any of the nerdish talk, Max. I just want you to get into when moon. Trust me, if you understand this, you'll understand how we do get to win moon. So for one, State Connector is a smart contract running on the Flare network that allows anyone to query non-changing verifiable information. This is also where you get that quant kind of feel to it. You know how Gilbert Verian talks about, you know, is it uh, trustless, immutable, um, verifiable, and so on, right? Yes, sounds a lot like quant. But... Here's the thing. You can also view this outside the Flare network, and that's big. You want to see that. You want to see that transparency. Back to the whole thing of the CEO when he was talking about data. Data that changes, such as the latest BTC to U.S. dollar conversion rate, for instance, and non-verifiable data, such as data behind a paywall, are not available through the state connector. However, state connector um, basically allows us to access data in decentralized manner. For one, there's no single party that is in control of the process. That's good. Think about it. Do you want a single party in control of this? Do you want your Do Kwans or Do Khan accessing it only him? You don't want that, right? So again, that sense of security. Is this a scam? No, it's not the scam. So in securely, uh, this all happens takes a lot of course of effort to disrupt the process it can be disrupted but this again kind of like quant is it immutable okay this is accomplished by using a set of independent attestation providers which uh fetch the required information from the world and deliver it course to the flare network 
The state can act smart contracts, then checks if there's enough consensus among the received answers and publishes the results if so. Now, we're going to go down to this example. You see how it works with the Flare network. You have the state connector um, basically requesting information. You got to reply, add a station providers, right? And of course, the World Wide Web it all comes together. Last point in regards to state connector. Um, it can check whether deposit has been made on another blockchain. That is very, very cool. There's ones that cannot do that unless that other blockchain has compatibility. This is, again, why Flare has a little bit of that quant feel. You know, shout out to Tim Shea. He always mentions that, you know, like Nixera is like Quant's younger cousin. Well, maybe Flare is kind of like Quant's little brother. You get what I'm saying? Or little baby. Little baby. Right? Anyway. I'm going to eat. Yeah. Anyway. Sorry. Anyway. Opening the door to more advanced mechanisms like F Asset or the Layer Cake Bridges. This, of course, gives you more of the details, but I think you kind of get the idea of how that works and why I wanted to bring it to your attention. All right. Now, jumping into a little bit more of what I have, I want to give you some notes. And basically, we talked earlier about can XRP scale, right? And I'm, I think the answer is yes. We understand there's some people that disagree, right? I, I respect the cool cat crypto, right? But my thing is this. Yes, it can scale, but can Flare scale? And can Flare allow scalability for other projects? Great question, right? And the answer is yes. Absolutely. How so? Well, let me give you some examples. So for one, yes, Flare can scale. It's a layer one blockchain, basically, that is designed to be scalable and secure. Flare uses a number of different tech to achieve scalability. For one, sharding with a D. No, Boomer F and Sooner, if you're here tonight. I don't know if he is, because I don't think I welcomed him earlier. Otherwise, I would have been like, Boomer F and Sooner. Um, no, we're not talking about sharding with a T. It's sharding, different type of thing. So what about Flare and sharding? Flare uses sharding to divide the network into smaller groups and nodes, I should say, um, each of which are responsible for processing basically a subnet. Now, if you're wondering about what the heck is that all about, and that's a great question, um, you know, it allows for the transactions, the subnet of transactions. Um, it allows, of course, the network to process more transactions in parallel, um, and it basically the, the main thing is to increase this overall throughput, right? That's a good, good thing. Now, earlier we talked about, um, you know, the whole thing what was a state bloat. What about state channels? Flare uses state channels to allow users to transact off chain without having to broadcast their transactions to the entire network. It, it's the same goes as like, um, you know, not volunteering all information, right? Only the necessary information. This can uh, significantly reduce the, the load on the network and improve scalability. All right, you know, think about it. Packets of information. If I send a request, for instance, like let's say I'm, I'm playing a video game, right? And they have a big update and, and the uh, the update is, you know, 100 gig update, like, you know, you know Modern Warfare or Modern Warfare 2. Okay, I understand it's a necessary update. Do I need to do a 100 gig update every single time? No, I do not. Right. I only sometimes just need like a, you know, 1.5 megabyte update. So this, of course, in regards to all this prevents um, problems in regards to scalability because you're not using as much system resources. Right. So the, we do have roll ups. Flare, of course, uh, can scale up to a layer two. Hear me out on this. And that particular solution can bundle multiple transactions together and process them, of course, off chain. How cool is that? This is going to further improve the scalability, of course, of the Flare network. Now, in regards to some of the criticism, there is some criticism, let's be honest. Flare network is a young network. And it hasn't been around really that long. I mean, the concept of, I think it's been around since 2016, but in reality, you know, as far as being built and mainnet, it's very young, okay? So for one, uh, since it's young, all right, there's a lot of room to grow, right? And again, why would I want to come into a project when it's fully, uh, like all the bells and whistles are done and so on, right? Like that's not going to be as much of a lucrative opportunity compared to other ones. Um, 
But yes, as more and more users and developers adopt Flare, the network will become more scalable. Think about it. It has a strong community, right? And that's always a good thing. Um, there's people like you saw earlier sharing some of the use case, right? Even doing the quant comparison. I mean, right? Not a lot of other communities, they don't necessarily do that. Um, and But here's another cool thing. They have at Flare Network the backing of big investors. And again, let's get out of the nerd talk. How, what does this mean for you as a retail investor? So by ha having the backing of big investors, Flare has attracted a number of high-profile investors, including Binance Labs, Anderson Horowitz. Um, this investment, of course, will help Flare to continue to grow and develop its scalability capabilities. So even though some people might say, hey, it's got limitations, hey, big investors are going to want to see it scale even further than it does. All right, speaking a little bit more in regards to what we have um, in regards to Flare, there's two main things, of course, to get more into the scalability. And Flare can basically scale XRP in two ways because we did talk about XRP scalability. So for one, we did talk about smart contracts and the other of course is through interoperability. Um, and bottom line is through EVM um, in itself, right? Ethereum virtual machines, um, these dApps that are EVM compatible with Flare, for instance, uh, make it possible for XRP to be used on just that, these dApps. So that creates not only more utility for XRP, but it creates that supply and that demand also for Flare. So they both go hand in hand. Um, and another cool thing that I also want to mention is Flare can also, were you aware of this, provide liquidity to XRP. That's really, really cool. Listen to this. So Flare does this um, by doing on decentralized exchanges, right? DEXs and so on and other DeFi platforms. They can make it easier for people to buy, sell XRP, and it can lead to increased demand, of course, for the token. Um, Flare also has this thing, again, we're back with the community. The community can promote XRP and its adoption, as well as realizing the demand for Flare at the same time. Um, in, in closing, in regards to the scalability part, Flare has the potential, of course, to scale XRP more than a number of ways, but by enabling smart contracts, providing interoperability, building a community, basically, Flare can help increase demand for XRP and drive adoption. All right, let me get to this next part real quick. Um, the last part in regards to scalability, all right? So Flare in itself, as far as it speeds, the Flare team has stated that they have been able to successfully target 10,000 TPS. Now, we understand from what we shared yesterday that XRP, as Ms. Day, they can do as much as 25,000 on the report that we had, right? But even with Flare, that's not too bad with 10,000, right? So, you know, if it was a case of, uh, and I don't see this happening, but what if, you know, this is a scenario, right? So let's say, um xrp had problems at 1500 tps they can go with flare hop onto the network and scale up to 10,000 tps right and of course there's a lot more other scalability to go higher than that and so on but you like the idea that they have that function to be able to do that that's a big deal so if you're wondering what is the targeted or height of the um Scalability for Flare is 10,000 TPS, but of course, like I mentioned earlier, with other investors coming in, they are looking to um, increase their TPS output even higher than that. All right. I know it's a lot of talk about Flare. I think we are almost done in regards to that. So let's get into this last part about it. Um, here's another great question. So how about this, guys? Which institutions or will institutions be using the Flare network? and specifically the Flare token, right? Great question. So basically there is quite a few different scenarios in regards to this where Flare can be attractive to um, institutional holders, right? Of, let's face it, the FLR token and its use cases. So of course, uh, smart contract capabilities, um, you gotta keep in mind, Flare is attracted to institutions that are interested of course in DeFi or other blockchain-based applications. Um, the whole project could be completely focused on their own use case for institutions or um, investors that come into the platform, like some of the examples we gave yesterday. 
um, where you had was it? I think it was called uh, a pletch or a plax. I can't remember um, something like that. Uh, built from Hedera, right? Or not built on Hedera, but partner with Hedera. Now that's all in fo focus strictly on like on investing and so on. But if that particular one didn't want to just settle for Hedera, right? They can contact Flare and say, hey, guess what? We want to expand to other particular ones. Flare can help them do that as far as smart contract functionality, but not all the other functionality that Quant has, for instance. Of course, we talk about scalability, but I think that's big. How about banks real quick in regards to Flare? This is a great question. Institutions can use Flare. They choose to do so. Banks could use Flare to offer new financial products and services to their customers, such as cross-chain payments, of course, and DeFi products. What about some of those asset managers? What about literally um, somebody like Larry Fink? Great question. Asset managers could use the FLR token to invest in DeFi and other blockchain-based assets. Last but not least, what about corporations, standard corporations? Great question. Corporations could use Flare to develop and deploy blockchain-based applications such as supply chain management systems and customer loyalty programs. This is where Flare even enters into the sector that XDC is in, that Morpheus Network's in, VeChain. They're also part of that mix, another utility layer that you may not have even been aware of. Now, you may say, how so, Max? I don't get that. Think about it for a second. What about all the, the entire trade finance sectors that have thriving or robust um, ecosystems, but you have a particular project from those ecosystems that want to go on and make their own thing, right? So they say to themselves, well, we still, for instance, like got XTC going, but then they want to go start their brand new thing. Flare is that plug. Flare is that connect. All right. I think I talked your guys' ears off about Flare. Um, so I'm just going to get into the last bit of what we have in regards to Flare. And here it is. Here is how you can actually earn more Flare. So I'm just going to go ahead and full screen this. And you can wrap, you can delegate, you can claim, and you can repeat the process. You can qualify for the monthly Flare drops like Mike Cornwell, basically, and other members of our community. Um, but you have to first wrap your FLR tokens, and it's going to allow you to maximize compounding by also delegating to the Flare Time Series Oracle to earn FTSO delegation rewards every, what, three to five days. How cool is that? Now, this was originally shared April 12th, 2023. We're just going to jump right into it. It's going to give you the whole gist of how you can do this from beginning to end. If you appreciate the Flare intro deep dive tonight, please smash that like. And when this gets chopped up, please let me know if you hold Flair and why you hold it. Thanks for being here tonight. Really appreciate you guys. Here we go. Anyone who has just hopped on board Flair will quickly learn that there are two primary mechanisms that allow for obtaining additional FLR tokens. This involves wrapping, delegating, and claiming, which we'll learn in under three minutes. FLR holders can participate in both the Flair drop and FTSO delegation, However, both require that you have the wrapped version of FLR. This simply converts the native token into a smart version, which allows for greater functionality. So if you've only just received FLR, especially on an exchange, it's likely not yet wrapped. The method of wrapping may differ slightly depending on which wallet you use, such as the Bifrost wallet, Metamask, or a hardware wallet like a Ledger device. Today, we'll use Metamask. If your FLR is on an exchange, first move it to your non-custodial wallet, in this instance, Metamask. To find instructions on setting up whichever wallet you're using, visit the user guides in the official Flare documentation at docs.flare.network. After funding your wallets with your FLR tokens, we can move to the Flare portal at portal.flare.network. Flare portal allows the use of Metamask or any wallet supported by Wallet Connect, as well as Coinbase Connect, and is the hub for the most common Flare actions. Once your wallet is connected, on the main page, find and click on Wrap. Input the number of tokens you wish to wrap, remembering to reserve a small amount for gas. Confirm the transaction, and your tokens will be wrapped. Now that your tokens are wrapped, you are automatically eligible to receive the Flare drop distributions as long as you maintain your balance of wrapped FLR. Now, to maximize your awards, you can at the same time participate in delegating in the Flare Time Series Oracle, or FTSO for short. 
In order to proceed, we must first find up to two data providers in the FTSO system to delegate our tokens to. You can visit flaremetrics.io to assess statistical data to help guide your choice. You can also see more meta info about these data providers on flaredashboard.io. With one or two data providers in mind, let's go back to the Flare portal. Find and click on the delegate button. In the input boxes, make your data provider selections as found from flaremetrics.io. With your selections made, press submit. Sign the transaction through your wallet and your delegations have been successfully submitted. With your delegation set, you'll accrue rewards every 3.5 days, which can be claimed at the bottom of the Flare portal, alongside your Flare drop rewards on the right, every month. For more information, you can visit docs.flare.network, where you'll find an assortment of user guides. Welcome to Flare. All right, so that concludes our coverage tonight in regards to this intro for Flare, this deep dive, whatever we want to refer to it. Mm -hmm.